Well, good morning, birders. I'm out here on another survey. A little out here in the hill country. A little bit more recognizable habitat. Got lots of the ash juniper all over the place. But we'll see what we can see. Of course, the target bird out here that everyone wants to find is the golden-cheeked warbler. So we'll see if we can find him. But actually, right now, I'm hearing some interesting birds. There's the chattery, chirpy, rufous crowned sparrow. That was him. And then further down there, not sure if the audio on the camera's picking it up, but there's a z z z z z which is a close relative of the golden cheek warbler. This is a black-throated green warbler that's singing down there. There, that's him. And the squeaky wheel sound that you might have heard in there is a black and white warbler. So the Buick's wrens and the Carolina wrens are singing. It's a little overcast, but the golden cheeks, they like it a little bit warmer and lighter out, so I'm hoping this will clear off a little bit, warm up a little bit, and we'll start hearing golden cheek warblers a little later in the day. That's usually how it goes. They're not an early rising bird. They're a little bit of a lazy warbler, so they'll wake up in a little bit, and hopefully we'll be able to find some of those. But it's not raining. It's a comfortable temperature. There's already good birds sing singing, so we'll go see what we can find. And there goes a white-winged dove. There's the white-winged dove. You see that nice little white on the wing? And the square tail. Even if you see the silhouette, it's much heavier bodied than the morning dove. And that squared off tail there. It's a little rounded, but not nearly as pointed as in the morning dove. So different body shape. You can identify it just by its silhouette. Fairly common around here. There's a black crested titmouse flying away. I just saw it fly out of uh, that nest box over there. Check if there's anything inside that. If it's just building a nest. Or if it's got more. So when you do nest box checks, it's always polite to knock first. That way you don't get a face full of bird if you just open it up. Then we'll just carefully... Oh, and I do already hear chicks in there. So I'm not even going to open it up. I'm not going to leave it alone. And let Mama Bird come back and do her thing, feeding the chicks. Well, I went and got my little optical camera, so that way I can check in here, see if anyone's home, without actually opening the box. Let's see. I see a chick. I see two, three chicks. A few little guys in there. There's a titmouse feeding the babies. <laughs> you can see the tail sticking up, and that's about it. And out she or he comes. And there's our black vulture. Just flew up there. Still a little cool out right now. Not very many thermals for them to ride, so they're not usually going to be up soaring in this type of weather. If they can help it, I'll usually wait till later in the day when it starts having hot thermals for them to soar on. And the black vultures, they don't have all that good of a sense of smell anyway. So what they usually do is sit around and wait till they see the turkey vultures. Then they follow the turkey vultures around to find food. And now here is a scrub jay. Many of you probably know this as a western scrub jay. But that is not correct any longer. The western scrub jay has been split into the California scrub jay and the Woodhouse's scrub jay. This one is, is the Woodhouse's scrub jay. So there are no more western scrub jays. Even though the birds themselves don't really know the difference. 
Got another nest box here. See if anyone's home. There's a black crested titmouse. That one just flew out of this nest box. So both nest boxes out here have titmice nesting in them. Again, always be polite and knock. It's in this one. And there we go. One, two, three, four little titmouse chicks. <laughs> Aha! I hear him. He's waking up. Golden cheek warbler. There he was. He just sang. So I tracked him down to this little ridge here, which he's not wanting to be seen today. He's somewhere up there. I can still hear him singing uh, just over this ridge, but he's got more important things to do than be seen by birders today. So he'll move around this area and he's probably staking out his territory. This is great habitat for golden cheeks. If you're looking for them, this is the kind of habitat you can find them in. Bunch of ash juniper, lots of slopes. It's not flat ground. They like these uh, raised valley areas. Anywhere where there's an elevation change, they enjoy it. And of course, there's plenty of water down here for them to drink. Nice flowing creek. And old ash juniper is what they like. You can hear them up there still singing. But they don't like the young ones. They need this old juniper that has this stringy bark on it. This bark is what they use for their nest material. They'll pull this stuff off and make their nests. The younger trees, the bark doesn't come off nearly as easily, and it's not this long, stringy stuff. So. If you're clearing out the juniper, it's fine to clear out some of it. It can be a bit overgrown, and clearing some of it out can cause a lot of groundwater to come back into the area. But do leave some of the big old ones around there, because it takes a long time for that stuff to grow back in to the level that our lovely, picky little golden sheep warbler will use it for nesting material. And they also don't like to nest in the junipers themselves. They'll nest up in oak trees or elm trees, but they use the juniper for nesting material. So you need a combination of multiple types of trees, uh, not just junipers. Like you can see, those are a bunch of young junipers. It'll be a few years before the golden cheeks are able to use those. And, well, that's a madrone tree in the foreground, but all those in the back are young ash junipers. You want these nice, big, old ones. And he's still singing away up there. But we'll see if we can get a look at him a little bit later on, if he comes out in the open, or if we find another one there. Territories are usually only a few acres, so if you move around in appropriate habitat, you can usually find multiple golden cheeks and spider webs getting in your face. There he is. Black and white warbler. Missing. There you go. That's the squeaky wheel bird. <laughs> Little gravity defying warbler. They'll flip upside down, walk underneath branches. Cool little birds. He's having a great day singing up there. And there he is. Golden cheeked warbler. Just singing away. Gorgeous little bird. Definitely see where he gets his golden cheeked name from. Big black throat shows that he's a male. And if he turns around, you'll see he has black all down the back of his head and on his neck. Now, since we did hear 
a black-throated green warbler this morning as well. They do look somewhat similar, but the males and females of black-throated green warbler have green down the back of their head and on the nape. Now the confusion can come in when you have a female golden cheek warbler or a juvenile because they also have green down the back of the head and on the nape, so they can sometimes get confused for black-throated green. But what you need to look at, besides the differences in sound, is that the black-throated green warbler has a little swoop below the eye, an extra little line, while the uh, golden cheek warbler only has that black line straight through the eye. So if you see any other distinguishing features on the face, like a little swoop under the eye, along with a uh, line going through the eye and green on the back of the head, that is a black-throated green warbler. But just the black through the eye is a golden-cheeked warbler. Yeah, it's giving a little bit of a different song now. And again, the differences in song between golden cheek warbler, we've heard just now, both of the there he goes. Both of the common sounds that the golden cheek warbler makes. They have either a rising bzz, 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 or kind of a warbly bzz, 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 up and down lazy o oh, daisy call while the black-throated green warbler has more of a bell curve z z zoo zoo z just up and down. There's a rufous crown sparrow. You can see that nice rufous crown. Dark malar stripe. A white mustache. And he's going back. And he's singing. That was his song. Nice little chirpy, bouncy song. And there goes our turkey vulture. Notice the V-shaped wings. That would be more flat with a black vulture. And black vulture would have a shorter tail. As I expected, turkey vulture is the first one up for the day. Once he finds something and starts heading to it, probably all the black vultures will pick up and follow after him. And I hear an ash-throated flycatcher calling off to the right. Kabrick! There he is. Kick bearer! Kabrick! Well, that was a pretty good morning of birding. Had some fun encounters with the golden cheek warbler and a few other nice birds. But that's about it for today. So. I will see you next time, birders.